Spoons to Kai Mathy vlogs. For those of you that have been with the channel long enough, you'll know that vlogs are something that I have done in the past, but I have to say I was never 100% happy with them. Usually, uh, one of two things would happen. I would either have a really busy week and completely forget to film anything for the vlogs, or I'd have a really quiet week and I'd be desperately trying to find something to make up the content. My other issue with vlogs back then was they were very much sort of bridging the gap between my IRL life and Kai Mathy's YouTube channel. And whilst most people would see that as a good thing, I unfortunately am one of those people that likes to keep my IRL life and YouTube life separate. Kai Mathy's YouTube channel is very much escapism for me from my IRL life, but at the same time my IRL life and work in particular sometimes is a good escape from the marathon that is YouTube. For those of you that might be new to the channel, hello, my name is Kai Mathy and I run Kai Mathy's YouTube channel deep down and high above in the orbital broadcast bunker, Britain's first and only airborne subterranean studio. But in actual fact, my name is Dougie and I'm a retro gaming enthusiast from England. I prefer the term enthusiast as opposed to collector because I don't really count myself as a retro video gaming collector. In fact, one of the things that inspired me to get back into vlogging was watching retro video game collectors on YouTube. Particular shout out to The Retro Ghetto. Well, you know about retro ghetto collecting and playing retro Street Fighter on the Nintendo and Retro Rummage. And we are back YouTube. They are definitely retro video game collectors. Uh, they have very, very impressive gaming collections. I have a small and modest uh, retro video game collection. Now, unfortunately, I didn't manage to get as many videos out in April as I would have liked to, but I did still manage to get out just the two jewels in the crown that is Kai Mathy's YouTube channel, and that is my retrospective review and my retro roundup. This month's retrospective review was on the 2003 title. I was going to say classic, but I'm not necessarily sure that it is a classic. It's a cult classic, certainly. Postal 2. We did it! Yes! And this is the copy that I bought all the all those years back then. I think it was, can't exactly remember how old I was, but I will put it on screen so you will know if I legally bought this or illegally bought it. It's a long way too. Well, now, no, hang on, we'll, go, we'll, we'll, go, we'll, we'll do that again. We'll do that again. Postal 2 is one of those games that, as I think I say in the video, is of its time. It has its issues. It's just the way video games were back then. And this is, as I, as I do say in the retrospective uh, review, it's a, it's a overly hyped exaggeration of what video games were like at the time. I quite like it as a game. It's it's all right. It's it, it's not going to win any... I was going to say it's not going to win any awards, but I think it possibly did win awards. Again, I'll put on the screen if it did, in fact, win any awards. If you haven't had a chance to watch my Postal Retrospective review, 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 please do check it out. I actually quite enjoyed putting this one together, even though, uh, like a lot of games that I seem to cover, I find it very difficult to get accurate information about voice actors, even though I've like checked the manual. I mean, Postal 2 might be a bit of a, a special case, because it seems to be that a lot of the voice work was done by People, as I understand it, people in that were in the company, in the dev, in the dev team. There's definitely no accurate images of a lot of the people that I mention in the retrospective review. Bar, I think the company is it the company managing director or the company production manager, and the guy that voices the postal dude because he's the guy that is just known as voicing the postal dude. As the Postal Dude, we have Rick Hunter, who has been the voice of the Postal Dude throughout all of the games in the series, except the train wreck that was Postal 3. This month's Retro Roundup, now I can't remember all of the games off the top of my head, you are going to be put in stocks and pelted with rotten tomatoes. I'm going to do this again. Ones that definitely stick out are Cool Spot. <laughs> Cool Spot, 
a platform game developed and published by Virgin Games for the Sega Mega Drive slash Genesis and Super Nintendo Entertainment System. A classic uh, platformer for the Mega Drive slash Genesis and Super Nintendo. The Tsar inclined his... Thanks, thanks for that. Uh, the bloody... We're getting text messages from you. Let's not be ill, Keith. That is definitely a game that I have quite fond memories of. It's one of the few, if possibly the only, game I've managed to convince my mother to buy me uh, on a whim all the way back in 1993 uh, on a trip to Dixon's, I think it was. Yeah, who remembers Dixon's? Bloody hell. Following games hit stores. <laughs> Other games that we covered were uh, Seventh Guest, which is a absolutely fabulously cheesy horror point and click game. The Seventh Guest, an interactive movie puzzle adventure game produced by Trilobite and originally released by Virgin Interactive Entertainment. Uh, definitely one to play with a few friends. Uh, over Halloween if you get the chance. I think I also covered it in my Halloween games video from a few years ago. It's an interactive movie puzzle adventure game and this is one of the first video games to be released on CD-ROM. The seventh guess is a horror story told from the unfolding perspective of the player as an amnesiac. The game received a great amount of press attention for making live action video clips a core part of its gameplay. Uh, please go and check that out if you haven't. There'll be a link in the description down below. Other games that were covered this month in the retro roundup were uh, Far Cry 3 Blood Dragon, Far Cry 3 Blood Dragon, a first person shooter video game developed by Ubisoft Montreal and published by Ubisoft. As a like standalone silly 80s parody video game, it's it's brilliant. Point. But for now, all you need to know is that the seventh guest to put. Oh, bollocks, Keith, stop messaging me. I'm trying to film. You're already in next room, lad. Whilst I said that I am indeed not by any way, shape, or form a retro video game collector, all power to you for, you know, getting up at the crack of dawn and going to car boot sales or spending your weekends scouring charity shops. Again, big up to the retro ghetto and retro rummage. Retro ghetto. All power to you chaps. What you do looks like tremendous fun but I know for a fact that A I do not have the time to do it and B I don't think I've really got the stamina to do it especially to get up at like stupid o'clock. That said usually of a month I will pick up a couple of retro titles if I happen to be passing a CEX or I see one in a charity shop window. First off I picked up uh, Half-Life for the PlayStation 2 and for you collectors out there, you'll be pleased to know that it is a complete edition with manual. I played this a lot on the PC. In fact, it was back in the day, I think 1998, 97, 98 this came out. It was very much a, um, a chance buy. I had bought a Star Trek game. If I can find the name of it, I will put it in under, uh, underneath with a picture of it. But it was a dull Star Trek game. I took it back and sort of said, look, I'm not happy with it. I'm happy with the credit note or just picking up something else. And I saw this, not this particular one, the PC version. And I thought, do you know what? It looks kind of quite good fun. I'll give it a go. And oh my God, it was such a good game. So when I saw it, I kind of thought, I'll pick it up. Especially because um, what actually got me into said charity shop was the next pickup. Half-Life 2 on the original Xbox. Now, I always think of this as being a relatively rare game, although I have checked it out on eBay and it's actually not that rare. You have chosen or... Again, with the original PC version of this, I picked it up immediately. It was when, if anyone remembers, it's when Steam first came out and everybody hated it. Are you the only one on that train? Here. And yes, getting Half-Life 2 to work on my PC back then was an absolute ball ache, but I really, really enjoyed Half-Life 2, as I think a lot of people did, and I thought, you know what, I've never played it on console, 
that's a lie i've played the orange box but i saw it and thought you know what actually i kind of want to add that one to my collection and it just so happened that when i went in they had the first one on playstation as well i don't know if this ever came out on xbox i don't think it did now Sorry to interrupt, but uh, those of you who were uh, tuned in to Kiamathi's other social media platforms will know that myself, I'm quite a fan of the old Apex Legends. Ah, I like a bit of good battle royale. There's nothing I love more of an evening than Nipping Down Canyon, or World's Edge, or Olympus, or Broken Moon, or an occasion Stone Point, but at least said about that the better, and pouring in a few news. <laughs> Angered the white muffin uh, after that shocking display. I'm gonna sort you a retail. Okay, sneaking up behind you. Have that, have that. She's down. Right, pull him over. Come on. How are you doing? Pull him over. 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 Flush this cheeky cool stick out. Come on, lad. Oh, I see what you're trying to do there. You're trying to get me to come into your little uh, thunder door, are you? Oh, no, 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 there he is, there he is. Come here. Come here. Oh, you big bag of bollocks. There we go. That's how we do it. Not a bad thing. Not a lad's like his face. That's right. Uh, what's the snake bite? Okay. Where's this? It's always a bloody cult. There's no race, it's a cult, isn't it? Right, final ring. Yeah, right, oh dear, where are we? Here he is. Have it, have it, lads. Yeah, take care of you. Cheeky reload. Where's it? Oh no, 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 no. It's just his death animation. Oh, here he comes. Top team. Have it. There we go. Bada bada bing. Whoa. Man's kind of best. Oh! Oh, he's there. He's on floor. It doesn't matter. He's deed. Ah, have you? Have you? Oh, the it it. there we go. Ah, thank you very much. We'll That's how you do it. <laughs> Banging. Yeah, right, mine's the best. Who's buying? For those of you that know me, it should be absolutely no surprise what I'm playing in April. It is. the Resident Evil 4 remake. I have mixed feelings about this remake. I agree with an awful lot of the fan base in that I would have loved to have seen a Code Veronica remake, not necessarily Resident Evil 4, considering, for those of you that know anything about the Resident Evil franchise series storyline, Resident Evil Code Veronica was originally meant to be Resident Evil 3, as far as I understand it. And actually, I think that game would have benefited more from a remake than Resident Evil 4 because the original Resident Evil 4 is still just as good today as it was back in... <laughs> 2005. I didn't have to look that up, honest. That aside, I have played a lot of this and I'm actually really, really enjoying it. Uh, absolutely cracking game. I mean, I'm a self-confessed Resident Evil fanboy, so I was obviously going to love it. But yeah, brilliant, brilliant title. Well, ladles and jelly spoons, I think that is a good enough place to bring my first video in my new series of vlogs to a close. If you're still watching, thank you so much. If you've enjoyed it, please be sure to click the old like button and maybe even leave me a comment down below telling me what you thought. If you've stumbled across this video and you are not subscribed to the channel, have a look at some of the other videos that we have done here and please do consider subscribing. As I always say, it is free and you can always just unsubscribe later. I have been Kai Mathy. We will see you Friday. <laughs>